Have you ever seen a problem that looks way more difficult than it actually is? Me too. But be careful, it's okay. This problem is not that bad. I, trust me, I'll show you how to do it. But it does look pretty uh, intimidating from the start. I have 1 divided by k squared plus 7k plus 10 minus 2k minus 7 divided by k squared plus 7k plus 10 equals 1 divided by k plus 2. And I think it looks so complicated because there's so many variables and also it's rational and a lot of students don't like rational terms. Well, a couple things we're going to remember, even in our basic mathematics, when we had rational terms, we could get rid of them by multiplying by our denominator. So that's exactly what I'm going to want to do here. I need to find what is our least common denominator. And to find like, just a common denominator, you know, a helpful tip is, a tip is you can just multiply all your denominators. You're not going to want to multiply all these denominators to find a common denominator. It's not going to be helpful. However, we notice that these two are the same. Right? And then I need to say, well, does k plus 2 divide into k squared plus 7k plus 10? Therefore, I wouldn't have to multiply those. So let's take a look. Um, I'm going to use synthetic division to prove that it does work. So to use synthetic division, I'm going to use the opposite of my binomial, term negative 2. And then I'm just going to take the coefficients of my trinomial to bring it down. So not making a tutorial on synthetic division, you bring down the first term, negative 2 times 1 is negative 2, 7 plus negative 2 is 5, negative 2 times 5 is negative 10, 0, so therefore I end up with k plus 5. So yes, k plus 2 actually does divide into k squared plus 7k plus 10 um, by multiplying by k plus 5. So that's good. So what that means is I can actually multiply every single one of my terms by k squared plus 7k plus 10, since that is my least common denominator. So that's exactly what I'm going to do. I'm going to multiply every term by k squared plus 7k plus 10. And you've got to make sure you multiply every term by k squared plus 7k plus 10 to produce equivalent equations and keep our solution um, true. So now let's just go through it. Well, k squared plus 7k plus 10 divided by the same is just going to go to 1. 1 times 1 is 1. Minus k squared, again, the same thing's happening. So that's just going to go to 1. But remember, so now I'm just going to have 2k minus 7. The big mistake students forget is this is minus this whole term, right? So if I eliminate the bottom, I'm still subtracting 2k minus 7. Do not make the mistake of just writing it minus 2k minus 7. Um, you've got to put parentheses around the negative 2k minus 7. Equals, oh, I should have left that up there. We saw that this divides into it by k plus 5. All right. So now I have a multi-step equation, and thank God it's linear, right? So what I can use here is now let's just use some steps to uh, isolate my variables. So with this negative 1, I'm going to have to use distributive property. 1 minus 1, negative 1 times 2k is a negative 2k. Negative 1 times negative 7 is a positive 7 equals k plus 5. Now, to solve for my variable, I need to get my variable on the same side. So I'll add 2k to both sides. And therefore, I have 1 plus 7 is going to be 8 equals um, 3k plus 5. Now, the next step I'm going to do is now I just need to isolate my variable. So I'm going to undo my steps by subtracting 5 on both sides. I get 3 equals 3k. Divide by 3 on both sides, and I get 1 equals k. So my math answer here is 1 equals k, but it's very important for us to understand that since I multiply by my variable, I have an opportunity for having extraneous solutions. So when having extraneous solutions, we gotta take sure, we gotta make sure we check our answer. So I'm gonna show you just by plugging it back in what will happen and see if it works. So let's plug in our solution one into this first part. So case so one squared would be one plus seven times one is seven. Uh, 
plus 10 is going to be 18. Right? Yes. So I have 1 over 18 minus 2 times 1 is 2 minus 7 is, so it would be 2 minus 7, which would be negative 5, over, again, that's going to be 18, equals 1 over 1 plus 2 is 1 third. So now I need to take a look at this, and really a double negative is going to be 1 over 18 plus 5 eighteenths equals 1 third. Well, 1 plus 5 is going to be 6 over 18 equals 1 third. And is 6 eighteenths equal to 1 third? Yeah, it is. When you reduce it down, you're going to get 1 third. So therefore, this is going to be our solution for this equation. Thanks.